Have you thought about building single family homes for rent? We're going to talk to a builder who diversified revenue streams, not only by forming a custom home remodeling division, but by building and managing rental units. Joining us is Julie Hancock, Managing Director of Camelot Homes, a builder of luxury semi-custom homes based in Scottsdale, Arizona. Julie, before we discuss your entry into the rental market, tell us a little bit about your company. Hi, Mike. Thanks for having me. Um, Camelot Homes is an Arizona family-owned a local home builder here. We're not a large builder. Um, I would call a small or in that or mid-size. We build anywhere from 50 to 150 homes a year, depending on market cycle. Um, and, you know, we found ourselves being very niche oriented to the high-end luxury. So we, you know, we were predominantly a million and a half dollar single family home. And we realized as generous and good as that market has been for us, we really felt the need to diversify to cycle protect. One of our long-term strategies for our company is to cycle protect so that if the high end softens, we had something to balance that out. And that's what led us to both doing a custom home remodeling division, which is different than our production housing, and also the single family rental. So you could have gone to like different price points in home building, but what uh, about the journey led you to consider rental? You know, we didn't want to dilute our brand. Our brand was so predominantly known as the high-end luxury. Uh, to, to go to different price points uh, just seemed to me like it was this, more of the same, but it would dilute our brand. So by going into single-family rental, uh, we created a partnership that isn't under the Camelot name, per se. Um, Camelot builds them, but it's under the partnership name, which is Arcadia Communities. Mm -hmm. uh, we felt that protected our brand. And it also brought us into an entirely different niche. You know, rental markets are sometimes counter cyclical to the residential sales market. So we thought that would protect us. So tell us a little bit about the product, uh, Arcadia Communities. Is it infill? Is it, uh, uh, you know, a hub of uh, rental units uh, concentrated? And, and what kind of housing are we talking about? So we looked at the single family rental market. We saw there were a lot of big players already in the space and more and more were coming. Uh, it was more and more difficult to find land that wasn't being bid on by you know, multiple big national builders. So we said, is there a space for someone smaller? And the concept came up that we could do infill deals. We could do small pieces of land anywhere from one acre to 15 acres. Um, and it, they were in existing residential communities. And what we did is we said, we're going to create a business model that has an exit strategy. Um, and that exit strategy could be to sell these units to one of the larger developers who's in this space already, or to sell them as single family homes. So all of our communities as single family rentals exist as single family homes detached with garages. That was something that we weren't really seeing in the SFR market in Phoenix. Most of them were a horizontal apartments. We decided to build single family homes in infill spaces. Are they one story, two story? What's like the, the style, the, the product type? We have two series, the cottage series and the estate series. And both series are two story homes, uh, three to four bedrooms. Uh, they range from 1600 to 2100 square feet. And they have two car garages. And depending on the lot size, they either have, you know, a very minimal five foot backyard or a generous 25 foot backyard. So, but predominantly smaller lots ranging from, I think our smallest lot is 40 by 50 to our largest lot is 50 by 100. Okay. And, and tell us about your renters. I mean, who are they? Where do they come from? Um, we've been, you know, just really pleased because they actually hit the market we were seeking. And um, we recognized that there were these 30-year-olds who have decided to marry later in life. And they don't have kids. They have a dog. They're starting to settle their family. They may not have enough money for a down payment, but they're tired of apartment living. So what they wanted was a yard for their dog, um, a, a home that they could perhaps grow a family in and save money as they're renting to be able to ultimately purchase. And our goal is that many of these renters, they're typically, like I said, in their 30s, dual income, no kids. Um, but our hope is that in the process of these next five to seven years that we plan to hold the units for rentals, uh, they will accumulate the capital to want to purchase and they will end up being our buyers of this product. So uh, that's kind of our, our cycle strategy on it is every uh, five years, we'll start selling the units and achieve the appreciation that the units may have received as a, as a residential unit. 
and uh, and roll new product in as we go. So essentially, you're, you've developed a pool of prospective buyers. And uh, are they like trying out the community or are they trying out, you know, the Camelot brand in terms of uh, living in the quality that uh, Camelot delivers? You know, I think they're trying out uh, single family home living. Um, I think most of them are coming out of apartments and they're saying, what's it like to live in a house? Do I like this? Um, these are high density. We are about six to eight units to the acre. So higher density than our Camelot product by, by a long ways. Um, but they're still detached. They have a yard. They have a place to barbecue. They have a place to have friends over. So I think they're trying out the lifestyle. And, and with that, Camelot builds quality and the, and the homes are beautiful. Uh, Woodley Design did, uh, did the homes mm-hmm. and they're, they're charming. Uh, it's something that even though it doesn't have the Camelot name on it from an advertising perspective, it goes under Arcadia Communities. I'm proud to say we built them. Uh, the neighborhoods are just charming and you drive through them and see these young families, young people in them and it, it's just great. So not only are you building the rentals, but you're doing the asset management. You're collecting the rent, you're mowing the grass, you're doing the upkeep. That's, that's not like the scary thing not, for, for builders. Not completely. I do okay. hire a company to add, to do the asset management. So we review the rental applications as a, as an organization, our, our partnership. But we have a company that does handle collecting the rents. We do the maintenance on the homes. So any kind of maintenance, because we built them, we maintain them. But the, the asset, I mean, the management company collects rents, um, finds us the tenants, and that handles the turnover. So I, I'm taking a little bit of, a, of it off our plate. Whew, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, uh, you, how many units do you have now? Right now, active, under construction and open. We have 97 units and we have another 334 lots tied up that we're, that we're rolling into. Okay. Um, we're currently working to, to develop an equity partner who will help us grow this because we think there's just ample opportunity and the infill spaces in the market. So we're working on establishing a relationship with an equity partner so we can grow it to you know probably a hundred million dollar business. And basically the model is to hold on to those for a few years. Uh, yeah, anywhere from yeah, anywhere from three to seven years, depending uh-huh. on the community. Some of these communities have built in equity the day we open up. So, you know, our cost basis in the house and we could turn around and sell them as single family and, and make a profit. But we want to hold them for a period of time to allow us to build up the pipeline so that we can continually bring new product in and then sell off some of the more aging product as it as it ages. But we're typically thinking our hold time is three to seven years. And is this outreach uh, accomplishing your goal of diversifying revenue streams? Absolutely. What's great for us is Camelot. We have these wonderful partners who've been in the industry, but we also have a steady flow of upcoming projects for our construction team to flow into from our high-end luxury. So if I've got a a product that's winding down in the high end and my, my site managers are there, they can run over and fill in on one of these sites. And so we're able to keep just a more steady flow of, of staffing, of trade base, and then also just that financial flow of income from, from the units that we're developing. And you've also diversified with your custom home remodeling division. Tell us about that uh, and, and what was some of the uh, decision-making in that journey? So we're family owned and I have three children, they're all in the business. So how do you grow a family run business? And we're third generation. So these kids are the third generation and they have children now. So when I call them kids, they're not kids, they're middle-aged adults, which makes me ancient. So I just try not to mention that part of it. (laughs) But in any event, um, all three of them have different interests in the business. And we wanted to give them ways that they could develop that they wouldn't be under our thumb. So one of our sons has decided that he wants to do what's called G3. He calls his community G3 for generation three. And he's building a new community in Phoenix called Paradigm, where he he's just using completely different architectural style than what Camelot does. He's trying to reach that price point of 700 to a million, and he's starting his first community, and that'll be open this fall. Um, Our daughter, however, had a completely different attitude. She was in YPO. She wanted to run the business. We weren't ready to let go. So she decided she's going to take over the Uh, custom home and remodel division. We found we have a huge database of existing Camelot home buyers. We've built thousands of homes in the Valley. 
who want to stay where they're at because there's not neighborhoods like what we built anymore. So they want to remodel and who to go to, but the builder that built their home that knows it best. So we're working that database of existing Camelot buyers. And then there was a lot of people that came into our Camelot luxury communities and said, I love your house, but I have a custom lot in this community, or I don't want to be in a, in a production community. I want to build this on my own. Could you find us a lot? So we thought, why are we missing out on this opportunity? Here's another niche. So those custom buyers now are coming and my daughter handles that. She's got her own team, her own architectural staff, her own site managers, and she manages those people from beginning to end, either remodeling or designing their custom home. So it's been a great way to diversify the family as well. Wow. Okay. Everyone in the family staying happy. Good. (laughs) I forgot to ask, what's the average or median rent, monthly rent for your rental unit? About 2,600 a month. Okay. All right. Well, Julie, I want to thank you for joining us and sharing your uh, company's journey uh, into diversifying revenue streams and getting it, making a big step into uh, build for rent. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Have a great day.